What is my purpose? And why do bad things happen to good people? And if Jesus really existed, why would he allow us to suffer? A quest for truth. Welcome to this segment of Contagious Courage with Vianne King. In studio today, uh, Mr. James Brown, uh, founder of James H. Brown and Associates. Uh, but Jim, you are a man of character and integrity, um, and you're a very humble man and dear friend. I want to thank you for being here today and allowing me to share your story. Uh, you're very welcome, Vianne. But I believe that uh, your journey uh, and the unanswered question that you had in your quest for truth I believe will help others right now. And so on that note, could you tell us what that burning question was that led you uh, on your quest for truth? And wh when did that all begin? Um, I think subconsciously we all are searching for truth and don't even realize it because we all have a need within ourselves to find out who we are and so on. But anyway, in 1975, I attended a party in the state of Washington, but something happened there that night that sort of shook me to my being. At that time, I basically uh, was an atheist. I'd been brought up in a Christian home, but left as soon as I was old enough to go my own way. Yeah. So there we were, and there's this, they had this huge bonfire going. This one young man, he would have been probably early 20s, wearing a pair of shorts, just put his hands up in the air and he said, I've seen the light. And he walked into that fire. Like into this, the, like the flames were like 20 feet high and it was like 10 feet across. Like this was a huge bonfire. And he walked right out into the middle of it. And it sort of like everybody was just sort of, they didn't know what to do quickly. So about four of us, like just instinct we didn't even think we just re uh, reached for his feet and grabbed him and dragged him out of that fire and we all just instinctively nobody said a word just started praying which was you know the first time i'd ever prayed for anybody and i never like there was no thoughts or anything it all happened instinctively huh. and we all were just praying with our hands on him laying he's laying on the ground so there was nothing and then after about 30 seconds, it was like you felt this surge of energy, of electricity, go up one arm and over and down the other arm. And everybody felt it at the same time. And everybody went, took a deep breath and went, oh, it was like he came back to life. And it turned out that he had no burns. And it, it just blew me away. And I came back home and I thought, I was just sort of shook. Like I couldn't figure out. I thought there's more happening in this world that I'm aware of hmm. because it just sort of, uh, with my worldview, things like that didn't happen. Right. And so I, I came home and I went to the bookstore and bought about 30 books on all different religions of the world huh. <laughs> because I just had to, like, I was just shook. And uh, about that time, a chiropractor from the States came up to practice with my uncle and he was uh, giving free meditation classes. So I was into searching and whatnot, and I started going to these meditation classes, which were Hindu meditation. It was a, He was a disciple of a man named Paramahansa Yogananda, the second East Indian guru to ever come to North America. And uh, so anyway, I started going to these meditation classes and uh, seeking God. And uh, so that went on for a while. And actually a year or two, and I was pretty indoctrinated in Hindu religion. And Hindu, of course, is a pantheistic religion, which, which they say the world is a manifestation of God, that all is God. You are God. I am God. This table is God. It's all God. There's no such thing as a personal God in Hinduism. Hmm. And uh, so anyway, uh, and they accept all religions because everything's God. So with in pantheism, the problem is in the mind. Everything's God, but we don't realize it. So we have to raise our consciousness until we realize that all is God, that I am God, you're God. Mm. And so I thought, well, if the problem's in the mind and we have to raise our consciousness through meditation, 
why am I sitting around and leading a normal life? Why aren't I out in the woods somewhere meditating? Okay, Which, okay. That was my next step because I've always had it. Whatever I get into, I've sort of had a one track mind. I go whole hog into what I do. Sort You're of crazy, all in. I'm all in. So I decided to move out to the bush. Uh, my cousin had gone through a divorce in BC and he'd recently bought a teepee and bought some land in BC. And I decided to go out there with him and uh, set up a teepee and meditate. And so, one way of meditating, the normal way, is you take a mantra which is just a phrase you say over and over again. And when your mind wanders, you go back to your mantra. By chance, I took the mantra that St. Francis had, said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. So I, that was my mantra that I repeated over and over for the whole time in the teepee for almost a year. And, uh, but anyway, after a year in the teepee, I wasn't getting anywhere. I didn't feel any more like God than before I went there. And, you know, and uh, so I thought to myself, well, maybe I need a guru. Yes. So I decided to go to India and look for a guru because I wasn't getting anywhere. And so made the trip to, was going to stop in Hawaii first for a few days and then go to India. So got as far as Hawaii. And the first day, I had my passport stolen out of a rented car when I'd gone to the beach. There's no Canadian consulate in Hawaii. So it was going to take some time. So I thought, well, maybe I'll spend winter here. And, you know, it was pretty nice there. <laughs> spend the winter. And so, in a teepee. And I was on the island of Kauai, which is called the Garden Isle. And the transportation system isn't as sophisticated as on the other islands. So I thought, ah. I better buy a car. Uh, I was walking through the shopping center at Lahui, that's the capital of the island of Kauai, big shopping center, and I spotted this, it looked like, a, I don't know car as well, but it looked like about a 1950 Chev station wagon that was this in showroom condition. It looked like it just drove out of the showroom. Yes. And it just caught my eye, and I thought, there's my car. And so I decided to wait till the owner came back. And so I'm standing there in the parking lot looking around and then this older gentleman, a Filipino man, came walking towards his car and I just approached him and said, oh, pardon me, sir, I love your car. I said, would you be interested in selling it? And he looked at me and he just, he laughed. He was a happy-go-lucky guy and out of the blue, he asked if he could pray for me. Okay. And, you know, and accepting every religion of the world and uh, I, I didn't, I said, oh, I'd love, you know, for sure, you know, go ahead. And he put his hand on my shoulder, put one hand in the air, and to this day, I don't know exactly what he said, but he prayed for me, then got in his car and drove away. And there I was in the middle of the parking lot, weeping like a baby. And I didn't know what happened. And this wasn't, like, I've never been an emotional person. And I was embarrassed and I was looking around hoping nobody would see me because there I'm in the middle of the parking lot and I'm weeping and I, I can't figure out, you know, I'm just hoping nobody saw me. So anyway, I thought to myself after this subsided and about 10 minutes later, I thought maybe he's a guru I'm looking for. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because wow, that's never had nothing like that has ever happened to me. And so I ended up looking all over the island and eventually found out he, who he was. He was a pastor of a little Filipino congregation called the Way of Salvation. And he never knew what I was into at all. Mm -hmm. He just asked me, he said, have you ever been baptized into Jesus Christ? And I said, no. He said, would you like to be? And I had read a lot of books in my, and even a lot of the Bible when I was in the Tipi. And I loved the concept of dying and rising to newness of life. I just love that concept. Yeah. And he baptized me in the ocean. And within five days, it sort of blew my mind. Everything I believed in Hinduism, because I was pretty indoctrinated in that worldview. Everything I believed, even though I was still trying to hang on to it, disappeared. And I was straight down the line, uh, Christian worldview. And it shocked me. And I thought, oh, my God, what is happening to me? Because if somebody would have said 
Now I'm saying things that if somebody would have said to me five days earlier, I would have thought they were nuts. <laughs> anyway, so it was like all the bonds had been broken. Wow. And that was, that was 1979. And it's just got stronger from that day to this. Wow. So wow. That, that's sort of the start of my Christian experience that, and uh, sort of changed my life. Totally that, changed my life. That, that is an incredible journey. I don't know about anybody else in their quest for truth, how you would like literally devote yourself to a year of being in a teepee. That alone, I mean, it's just a, an incredible journey uh, in itself. Uh, what has... Uh, what have you learned from that quest that helps you in your life now? Thing is, my whole life changed. I had been wandering for many years. I'd gone through a divorce uh, early in life, and I had two children, and uh, I'd just been basically wandering. I, I was looking for a book uh, at one time, uh, and it was only available at the Pecos Benedictine Monastery, and I ended up arriving there, and the abbot gave a speech and he said, if men don't find something to give their life to, they will throw it away. And that hit me. I realized that had, since my divorce, that's exactly what I had been doing. I was throwing my life away. So it, 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 uh, it gave purpose to my life. Christy, the Christian worldview gave purpose and an anchor. That's, that's an incredible uh, truth journey. What would you hope to inspire people with? from what you have learned uh, that would help them in their quest for truth. There's an emptiness in man's heart. Like St. Augustine said that um, we all have an emptiness in our heart that nothing can satisfy except God. Mm. And no matter what we try and fill our lives with, whether it's money or uh, sex or any other thing, nothing can satisfy the heart of man except God. But with God will overcome them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, in, in this isolation uh, now for you, what has God been speaking to you uh, in this time? Well, it, it's actually been pretty easy for me because I'm a sort of a recluse by nature, you know, <laughs> living in the TV and the yes. whatnot. This is, so this is sort of natural for me. And uh, But uh, in terms of what God is saying, God is in charge and... Yeah. He's leading us. Uh, we're strangers and pilgrims on the earth, Bian. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. It's not our home. We're looking for a city with house foundations, mm -hmm. whose builder and maker is God, where dwelleth righteousness. Mm -hmm. And as pilgrims and strangers on the earth, any struggles here, we know we're going to have struggles here. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel okay. shall find his okay. life. And uh, that just will carry a, people through anything. Yes, that, that's beautiful. I love that. What would be a legacy uh, that you would like to leave? Uh, a legacy you want to leave to your family or to friends or even a community of people that are watching you um, at this time? I would hope that uh, my life would encourage my family and friends to uh, perhaps follow Christ. Mm. And, and I think that's... I could never not hope for anything uh, greater than that, that my children and my family would follow Jesus Christ and accept him as their Lord and Savior. That would be the greatest thing I could ever hope for in this life. Isn't that the truth? Uh, thank you, uh, Jim, for those beautiful words of encouragement. And uh, I'd ask Jim if you wouldn't mind closing us out in prayer. Lord, we just rejoice in your goodness today. And Lord, I know there's people out there that don't have that foundation, that solid foundation to build upon. Yes. I just pray for those people, Lord, today, that they would just realize and open their hearts to your great love. Yes. And who's ever out there, whatever you're going through, whether it's uh, problems in a marriage, whether it's alcoholism, whatever it is, maybe it's depression, mm. Jesus Christ is the bondage breaker. Yes. He yes. will break every bonds and set you free just feed on that love that he has for you yes give you thanks lord we know you're going to bless people today in jesus name amen amen that is wonderful and all that i have left to say not to us O lord not to us but to you and your name goes all the honor and glory for his unfailing love and faithfulness until next time amen, amen.